Welcome everyone to Mail Fuzz TV. I am Peter and today I'm going to be talking about The X-Files Season 2 Episode 6. It's called Ascension. The spoilers for the episode. And this is somewhat of a second half of a two-parter, effectively. Although, it doesn't neatly wrap everything up because Scully's still missing. Uh, well, she wasn't missing before, she was kidnapped and now she's just mysteriously vanished, possibly abducted by aliens. I suspect this is when she's taken her break. Gillian Anderson's taken her break for, for the pregnancy, which, interestingly, they chose to do a pregnant thing here with her, because they didn't have to do anything with her. They've hidden it effectively up until this point. But they do a thing when we get a glimpse of her on what seems to be kind of an alien operating table, or, and this is important, a secret military base operating table that's just being shot to look like it's an alien abduction. That's also very possible. In fact, I I don't know, it feels like we're, we're veering more towards the military doing stuff in this episode, as opposed to it being aliens. Perhaps the, uh, the metal tracking things that were in Dwayne's body were, like, alien tech, because we know the military and the government have been secretly trying to use alien tech, but maybe he was just experimented on because he was a soldier rather than because, you know, he was abducted by aliens. But regardless of, of where we land on that, if we ever get like a more of a definitive answer, yeah, Scully's gone, uh, and they do a thing where it's like they impregnate her briefly, like her stomach rises very rapidly. So I don't know what they're doing with that, if she's going to have some sort of weird alien child. <laughs> We'll see. Um, but no, I, I like this episode. I like this episode. Uh, basically, it's, bas it's home to like three or four very, very good scenes that I really enjoyed. Uh, the episode begins with Mulder arriving home and hearing the answering message uh, from Scully, hearing that she's in trouble. And I very, very much enjoyed the way they directed his arrival at her house at the crime scene. Because they actually switched to this kind of ultra shaky POV shot of like the, the policeman lifting up the police tape to let him in. And I thought that was really cool because it, it really put you in this state. Because it doesn't do this POV thing often. This was a very d different stylistically for the show. So it sold that this felt different to every other crime scene that we've seen Mulder go to. And it also made it feel more personal. And he is nervous, he is scared. Because he cares about Scully, but also because he kind of probably will feel responsible for anything that Dwayne Barry does because he kind of messed up with him. He made some mistakes. He probably is going to feel responsible for anything that he does now that he's escaped and out and doing stuff. So I, I think that's tracks there on top of just obviously the general he cares about Scully. And then the fact that it could be an alien abduction once he, you know she's eventually missing and it's not just a kidnapping later in the episode... The idea that his sister was abducted by aliens, so the you know it happened again to someone he cares about, also adds like an extra tinge if that's what's going on. And credit to Mulder, probably one of the more interesting things about this episode is that I don't think he, in the back half of this episode, just believes she was abducted by aliens. Obviously, he's exploring the possibility. The episode does end with him looking up at the stars, wondering if that's what happened. And that's clearly what that moment is. But he doesn't fight for that throughout the back half of the episode. He quite openly suggests that this is actually just the military doing secret shit when he's talking to the others. And it doesn't feel like he's just trying to cover his opinion. Well, for a start, he's never done that. He's always made himself sound like a crazy man by just uttering whatever nonsense he believes in front of anyone. So I don't see why it would start now. I thought that was interesting. That actually felt like a bit of a development. It's almost like the scare of Scully being taken and whatever's maybe happened to her. Maybe it's just the idea that he's finding almost a little bit of comfort in it being the military because then it's more likely to get her back. Because if it's aliens, then, well, he's never got his sister back, did he? So, obviously we know that Scully's going to be back because it's the X-Files and she's the second lead character and I just know that she's in future seasons. <laughs> so I suspect she'll be back later this season, would be my guess. I don't know how quickly that'll be, but I suspect it will be. Uh, but like I said, I, I like the crime scene. 
and him looking around uh, the various like moments or the, the the places of interest and getting the little glimpses, almost like he's Sherlock Holmes, like seeing the crime happen in his head. That was kind of fun. He's basically told to like stay away from the case because he's too close to it by Skinner, which makes sense. We also see that Crychek's talking a lot to the the smoking man. Uh, that he's directly answering to him and doing stuff for him. The next big set piece, though, um, comes after uh, Dwayne, who's driving Scully to an unknown location, runs into a cop. There's a, you know, a traffic cop uh, pulls him over. And he sees enough suspicious stuff that he pulls his gun on him, and ultimately Dwayne ends up shooting the cop. He murders the cop. But the cop's car, his traffic cam actually catches some of this crime and that makes its way back to the fbi of course Mulder is able to see that scully's in the back of the car that she's still alive that's all fine and well and he's able to sort of predict maybe where he's going based on the fact that Dwayne kept saying in his therapy sessions that he uh, talking about a mountain and one of the, the slogans that he kept saying is tied to a slogan for a mountain that happens to be on the road that he's driving on when this crime happens so He's able to kind of put two and two together and guess that he's going to this specific mountain. So Mulder makes his way there. Crycheck insists on going. Crycheck is going to try and stall him. We hear him say that on the phone, presumably, presumably to the smoking man. And it all ends up with this big set piece where Mulder insists, almost by threatening to shoot this guy who works at the ski lift place, that he needs to use the ski lift to get up the mountain because it's quicker than driving up the mountain. And he has to be up there as quickly as possible because Dwayne's obviously got a huge head start. He's already up there probably, or close to. He goes on the ski lift, which has not been tested. They've just replaced the cables for it and it's not been tested for passengers, which is why the guy doesn't want to let him do it. But he does, you know, under threat. And basically says, you can't go quicker than 15 miles per hour. I'm assuming it's miles per hour. It may not actually be that measurement, but it was 15 on the, the dial. So I'll just say miles per hour. You can't go quicker than 15 miles per hour, uh, or it's, it's too dangerous. Of course, Mulder completely starts to just ignore this almost right away and cranks it as far as it can go. And eventually the guy gets him over the radio in the little uh, ski lift thing. And he's like, hey, the cable will dislodge at the towers, every, at all the checkpoints, if you don't slow down. So Mulder starts slowing down just when he's going past the towers, holding up the cables, and then speeds back up again for the bit in between. He's really pushing his luck. But I liked all this because it fed into this idea that he is desperate to save Scully for all the reasons that I was already getting to before, which is that one, he cares about her, two, he doesn't want to lose her like his sister, and three, he feels responsible for whatever Dwayne's doing because he sees his current situation as a bit of a failure on his part for how he handled everything in the last episode with the hostage situation. So I liked all of this stuff. Uh, it was a little bit funny because if you're watching it in the remastered HD now, you can kind of clearly see that it's not David Duchovny on those wide shots outside the ski lift. But I also really liked that it gradually gets dark. Like by the time the ski lift trip comes to an end, it's nighttime. I thought that was a cool little uh, transition. It felt like we'd been on this little journey getting up the ski lift. And it gets dangerous because Crychek starts to really play his hand this episode because he kills. I actually didn't think he killed him. I thought he just knocked him out. It's not until later we find out this ski lift guy is actually dead. But Crychek hits him in the back of the head and then turns off the ski lift so Mulder's trapped just sort of like mid journey. Well, not mid journey. It's, he's actually quite close to the end, but he's, you know, it's, it, he's trapped and he can't get to land. And Mulder starts climbing out and seeing if he can do anything. And then Crychek freaks out when he sees Mulder on the security camera up on top of the thing. So he basically tries to kill Mulder by making it move again whilst Mulder's on top of it. Mulder's able to hang on though. But we get this fun little action sequence where Mulder's like dangling off a ski lift. And Honestly, for a 1994 TV episode, that's all looked quite good. <laughs> I thought it was quite fun. It was quite exciting. Um, added some tension on Mulder's race to get to Scully and to get up the mountain. But once he's up there and he finds Dwayne, and he sees a bright light, which is coming from a helicopter, but obviously it looks like an alien light at first, as you do. And he just finds Dwayne. And Dwayne's happy because they took Scully instead of him. That was his plan the whole time, was to trade someone else so that they'd stop bothering him. And that's what he believes has happened. And Mulder arrests him, of course. 
other FBI shops. Skinner eventually shows up. He's pissed at Mulder for disobeying orders. But Mulder, there's a great scene where he interrogates Dwayne, and I love the shot at the start of this scene, because Mulder's kind of sitting against the wall, and Dwayne's kind of just in a chair, but he's off to the left of the frame, and the camera just pulls back, and it just kind of feels like Mulder's sitting there seething, like he really wants answers. And he starts demanding answers, and Dwayne is adamant that it's, he doesn't know where Scully is. He didn't do anything to her, he didn't kill her. Because Mulder does actually grab him and says, did you kill her? And I think, again, it's this idea that this is so serious, that almost the things that he always jumps to, the more fantastical alien stuff, is almost out the window. And I think because he feels like he messed up last episode with Dwayne specifically, he is treating Dwayne right now like he is just a, like a potential murder suspect, more than anything else. Um, I, I thought, again, I thought that choice was, it was really good. It almost sells that how serious Mulder's feeling right now by having him not focus on the alien part of all this. He's focusing more on the human part of this. But he does get a little bit rough with him, though. He grabs him by the neck at one point, uh, strangles him for a moment, but you know, he calms down, he pulls himself away, he realizes what he's doing, he storms out and tells Crycheck to not go in. Also, at one point, Crycheck was standing at the window with two other creepy dudes in suits, which uh, Mulder didn't see, but Cry, uh, but uh, Dwayne did. Dwayne saw this, and he's like, "Hey, they're here, the military men." And then Skara shows up, and then basically Cry checks alone with Dwayne for a minute. Mulder pulls him out, but then quite quickly after this, when Skinner arrives, Dwayne starts dying. He seemingly has been poisoned. That's how I read it. I read it that Cry check just killed him so that Mulder couldn't get answers from him. They're covering up whatever's going on here. Um, I think I, what I really appreciated about how this moment was done is that Mulder and Skinner come into the room as well, and you get this shot where Crycheck's in the front of them, then Mulder's in the middle, and then behind Mulder is, is Skinner. And the camera sort of like comes in to focus on Mulder, and I was kind of waiting for it. I was like, oh, like, either Mulder's going to turn his head and look at Crycheck, like he suspects him instantly. And he doesn't suspect him instantly. He suspects him soon. Right, it, it, like it doesn't take too long before he starts suspecting Crycheck, but he doesn't suspect him instantly. The other option, though, is that Skinner turns to look at one of them. Though that's how you end this scene. You have Skinner; they're all staring down at the victim, uh, Dwayne, trying to be resuscitated by paramedics, and Skinner turns and looks at Mulder. You can read this moment as just he suspects Mulder's done something bad, and that's partially maybe what he is doing in that look. But I think given where this episode goes, and it's clear that Skinner is getting frustrated, uh, that he because he, he he's stuck between these these difficult places with uh with the smoking man and being being given these orders. And I think one of the more interesting things here is that the autopsy is done by a military uh professional, not someone from the FBI. It's not an FBI coroner. And that sounded fishy immediately, because, like, well, if the military are covering something up, it makes sense they'd want their own coroner to, to do the autopsy and conveniently not mention that the, the victim was poisoned, right? And it's like, well, the only plausible reason he's dead is these bruises on his neck, and it looks like asphyxiation, meaning Mulder is potentially the one who did it. But the smoking man has told Crycheck to back up Mulder's story, which is that he left the room and wasn't with him when he died. He died sometime later. And the reason for that is to keep Mulder's trust. At least that's what the Smoking Man says. I don't know if the Smoking Man knows that's not going to work and that ultimately they're letting Crycheck sort of like ruin his cover here uh, and just sort of let him stay until it all falls apart. Mulder tries to argue his case. He tries to argue that there's a cover up here and that Scully might just be taken by the military. He goes to try and get, get to that senator he knows, and he ends up talking to Mr. X instead. Very dramatic lighting in this scene. Mr. X is straight up just hidden by shadow. You can see just his chin until he steps out into the light. Very, very, very dramatic. And he's basically like, oh, like, he can't help you. This is like, even my predecessor couldn't help you with this. This is too hush-hush. But their policy is to deny everything, to cover everything up. That's what they're going to do. I've enjoyed a lot of the scenes up until this point in the episode, uh, particularly the ski lift stuff, Mulder going to the crime scene at the start of the episode, 
Um, I think a lot of these interactions, uh, Mulder with, with Dwayne, I think they all have a lot of weight to them in this episode, and it always feels that we're getting interest, interesting glimpses into Mulder's character and where he is right now. Like, he's really being pushed, like he's really being tested. But also Skinner, because this is where I'm getting to my, my sort of final, like, really great scene of the episode. And it's, you know, it's towards the end. But it's Mulder goes to Skinner after he's looked, because he's, he's in, uh, what's his face, Krychek's car, and sees evidence of smoking in the ashtray. So he doesn't actually link it straight to the Smoky Man, because I don't think he, like, he's obviously seen him around, but he's not necessarily caught on that he's the mysterious bad guy and not everything yet. But he's like, he doesn't smoke. He's the only person who could have been there. Also, that ski lift guy ended up dead, and he was the last person to see him. There's a lot of fishy stuff here that doesn't quite add up. To the point where Skinner sort of paces around for a little bit. He's asked to see Crycheck, but he eventually sort of lowers his guard and says, all right, Mulder, what do you have? And Mulder like, gives him all those bits of information that suggest that he, why he thinks that Crycheck is working for a third party and that this is all some sort of big elaborate cover-up, blah, blah, blah. And Mulder actually asks a question. Mulder says, what do you know about Crycheck? And Skinner doesn't get to finish his sentence because the phone rings, but he does start by saying, I never assigned him. I was just told, and then the, like, the phone rings, and we don't get to hear what he's saying, but it, it's becoming more clear that Skinner isn't necessarily actively trying to cover anything up himself. He's just kind of at the behest of what the higher-ups are, are in some way telling him to do. Um, and he asks Mulder, do you think Scully's alive? Which I think is indicating that Skinner does care. He cares if Scully's alive. He cares that one of the agents underneath his watch are in this predicament, possibly through to shady activity that's kind of been injected into his, like, department. Like, you know, he's got an FBI agent possibly working under him who's there to do put, put the agents in danger, to not look out for his own kind of thing. And I think that affects him here. And when they find out that Crycheck didn't show up for work and his home phone's been disconnected, like he's just disappeared into the wind, which is very suspicious, obviously. And the conversation gets interesting because even Skinner kind of refers to them as they. He says, the only thing that will hurt them is what I'm doing now. I'm effectively, as of right now, reopening the X-Files. That's what they fear. He used that word, they. And it's just a very interesting thing because Skinner up until this point, there was little hints that he did care a little bit. There was that scene a couple of episodes ago where he told the smoky man to get out of the room, right? For the most part, Skinner has been kind of like the authority figure who Mulder has the answer to. He's always pissed at him. <laughs> he's always kind of button heads with him. And he's putting his, you know, he's putting his foot down with Mulder. But I think there's these hints that he does care about his agents, that he's not necessarily aligned with the Smoky Man and the shadier parts that the Smoky Man represents. And I think this moment here is that, you know, as much as it's not a friendly alliance, in some ways Skinner is an allegiant of, of Mulder, of the X-Files, because he's seeing how much effort they're going to to do all this, and maybe the idea that they've possibly harmed Scully or put her in danger, along with feeling like he's had the rug pulled out from under him by having this sort of double agent put into his midst. Like, there's a lot of reasons what, you know, it's hard to nail exactly which one has affected his decision here the most until we maybe get more of Skinner and see how he reacts to other things. But it definitely felt like an interesting beat to have him just make this choice. Like, he's been defiant now in the moment. And they're not going to like this. And if anything, everything they've done here just strengthens that the X-Files will continue to be a thing. In fact, Smokey Man himself even said to Crycheck, because you know, Crycheck's like, why don't we just kill Mulder, right? You had me kill other dudes. I mean, he doesn't say it in those lines, but he's, he implies it. And the Smokey Man's like, and uh, no, uh, that's not our policy. Plus, if you kill uh, one man's you know, one man with a religion, it becomes a movement kind of thing. It's that idea that he'll become kind of a martyr to the cause of, of uncovering the secrets because he's everyone knows the types of things he looks into and it'll be too suspicious perhaps if he ends up dead or missing. This idea that potentially harming Scully, kidnapping Scully, possibly killing her or whatever they may or may not have done, because they don't know. Skinner and Mulder don't know. The idea that Skinner... 
like, like was motivated in part by that to reopen the X Files almost proves what the Smoky Man said is true. That even the idea that that uh, Scully has been put in harm's way by what they have done has inspired someone to strengthen Mulder's mission against all the things they're keeping secret. And that's quite interesting narratively to me. I, I think that's like one of the more interesting things that this this uh, season has done so far. So, And the, the season, for the most part, has been very confident. I don't think there's been a super weak episode as of yet. And this one... It's funny, I liked how like condensed the last one was in terms of that one location. It was a simple crisis to solve, but there was some unique things going on around it. This one was a lot more sprawling, but it, arguably I think it did a lot bigger things with the characters and themes and continuing on. Skinner is becoming a far more interesting character as a result. Uh, I suspect we might not have Scully for a little while, assuming this is when she left for uh, maternity leave. But I, I don't know. I, I have no idea if that's true or not. Maybe, maybe she'll just be back next episode. But it seems like Mulder might just be flying solo for uh, a little bit. Maybe we'll see Crychick again. Maybe they'll get him. Or maybe Crychick will turn up dead. Maybe Smoky Man and his cronies will just have him killed so that there's no trail to follow, you know? Maybe they've made him disappear quite literally. I, I don't know. But so there's a couple of scenes with Scully's mother uh, that Mulder has. Uh, one at the crime scene early on, and then at the end, uh, right before the last scene of Mulder going up to look to the stars, bleh, right before Mulder goes back up to the mountain to look at the stars, uh, he found her her necklace, her cross, in the car uh, when he was you know looking for her on the mountain, and tries to give it to Scully's mother, but she gives it back to him. But he does ask an interesting question, uh, and you know Scully's mother has an answer for it, but. This idea of if she was such a skeptic, then why should why would she have this kind of thing? So I don't know. This is interesting. The idea that obviously Mulder's not a religious person per se in the traditional sense, but you could argue that he needs to have faith in all the things he does believe in because everyone else is so skeptical about it. I don't know. There's an interesting parallel or a thought to that that maybe bears some more more analysis as, as we see maybe more examples of the subject being brought up in the show so no uh, that's ascension uh i look forward to seeing where we go next with these characters and how they bring back scully and what might come of the weird pregnancy thing they did to her because you know scully wasn't pre- uh, jillian anderson was prior but scully wasn't pregnant before this episode so who knows what they're doing? Maybe they used her to incubate some weird hybrid clone thing based on alien DNA. I don't know. Uh, they gave her some uh, some xenomorph uh, <laughs> juice or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's that's uh, that's my thoughts on Ascension. Uh, let me know what you thought of the episode in the comments. Of course, you can support all the content by going to patreon.com slash TV and supporting us over there. And help keep the lights on. Uh, but if you want to help for free, then hit the like button. Helps out a bunch on YouTube. More people will find us. So thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla?